What's up YouTube? Thanks for clicking on this video. I'm going to show you how to make one of these walnut and maple American flags. Uh, I'm going to go step by step and let me know what you think in the comments below. Enjoy! So to start off this flag build I started cutting the boards to 21 inches. This is going to be for the top seven stripes. Uh, after that I'm going to cut more boards to 36 inches in length and that's going to be for the bottom six stripes. So we have everything cut to length now. These are the short stripes on the top. There's seven short stripes total. Here are the longer stripes on the bottom. There are six stripes on the bottom. And then this is the union. Okay, these will be cut evenly and put together like that. So now we're off to the planer. Right here I'm planing the boards down to about seven eighths of an inch. Uh, later I'll plane them down to three quarter of an inch, which will be the final thickness of the flag. Right here I'm just truing up the edges on the joiner and then after this I'm going to take them over to the table saw and rip them up to about an inch and a half for each stripe. I wanted to take the hard maple back over to the planer because it's a lot easier on my planer being a 110 to just run it through in the one and a half inch strips rather than the entire board at once. Right here I'm just cutting up each individual stripe. The top ones are 21 inches in length and then the bottom ones are 36 inches in length. So here's the union. I just butt jointed them and glued them up like that. Uh, I had to later chisel the excess glue and then join it over on the joiner. For a 36 inch flag, the union should be 15 inches in length by about 10 and a quarter inches in height for the ratio to be correct. So right here, I'm just ripping it up to the correct dimensions. This is a really simple trick to make sure that you're not taking off too much material. Uh, you just want to slide the material under your planer heads and then make sure that it's lifted up high enough so that you can turn it on and then lower it down. And as soon as you lower it down enough for it to touch it, it'll take it through. So after surface planing the union, I brought it over to the chop saw, squared up the edge, and now down to the CNC where I'm going to engrave the stars and later pour in the liquid resin. For this engraving process, I'm using a 90 degree V-bit by Inventables. Uh, I'm actually cutting it lower into the surface than it should be. That way when I plane it down later, uh, it will expose the crisp edges of the stars and not take away from the actual dimension that was there before. You'll see what I mean later. So I decided to go with this glaze coat resin from Lowe's. It's about $16 for this size. Uh, I got the pigments on Amazon. It came in a 24 pack and I decided to go with the blue colored pigment for the stars here.
the resin was drying in the stars, I then took the time to glue up the bottom six stripes. So a lot of these stars are actually raised up above the piece of walnut. So I'm gonna glue on these really thin strips. That way when I run it through the planer, the rollers feed on the strips here and not actually on the stars themselves. I have ran it through the planer a few times with the strips on the sides here. Um, it's gotten down far enough so that it's hit some of the high spots on these pores and it's taken off the, the strips here on the edge. Now I'm just going to go down a little by a little until we get these corners of these stars nice and crisp. My planer does a pretty good job of cutting a nice even finish across the top so I just use 220 here to buff up any infections and then after that I pour a alcohol on it just to clean it up and prep it for the final coat. After pulling out my long stripes out of the clamps, I then go ahead and glue up this shorter stripes. After everything's had time to cure, I then plane it down to that final three quarter inch thickness. Right now I'm just squaring up the union along with the top shorter stripes, the seven top stripes, and I'm gonna get ready for that glue up. Right here I am book matching the two pieces and running them through the joiner at the same time. This will give you a perfect joint between the top section of the flag and the bottom section. Flag is finally dry and now it's ready to take it over and do a little bit of sanding for the final finish on it. It 
You'll see me often pour on alcohol to clean the surface and really dry out the pores. That way the finish gets all the way in the pores and sticks to the surface. I wanted to make the flag pop out away from the wall, so I went with a quarter inch chamfer to do that. I then just heat up my brand and wipe the back of the flag with a little bit of water. It raises the pores and gives a nice even brand the whole way across. Right here I'm just making a maple uh, raised panel bracket for the back of the flag to pop it off of the wall kind of. I'm just applying a little bit of tongue oil to the back of the flag and then for the final finish on the front of the flag I'm using that same epoxy that I got from Lowe's and just pouring it a nice even coat across the front. It's as easy as it looks, just dump it on, spread it out, and make sure to get the air bubbles with a torch where you see the white bubbles pop up. Just hit them once or twice and it's ready to cure. So that about sums it up for this hardwood flag build. There's a couple things that I would probably do differently but I think it turned out pretty well for the most part. If you found this video helpful at all, I would appreciate you hitting the thumbs up button or even subscribing to my channel where I'll be posting how-to videos like this one. Until next time, see you later.